Good afternoon, space flight enthusiasts. Those of you who stay with your finger on the pulse of NASA budgeting may have heard, well, you probably heard a few days ago, that thanks to Senator Cruz, a number of important aspects of the NASA program, that is to say, continuing operation of the International Space Station, the SLS, the Lunar Gateway, Orion, all of these things that have taken so much flack for being too expensive and out dated and therefore being shut down at least after artemis 3 for most of them well now they've been saved with a considerable amount of money being invested in these programs thanks to a rider bill that was attached onto the so-called big beautiful bill that is now a law of course but what most people don't realize is that the programs that congress just spent 10 billion dollars to save have actually come out as being even less cost effective and more behind schedule than they were before according to the government accounting office whereas the scientific programs that the government did cancel were on target and on budget all of this and more coming at you on the angry astronaut right now Good afternoon, space flight enthusiasts, and welcome to another Angry Bulletin. This is going to be brief compared to some of my videos, simply because I'm in the process of recovering from a very nasty skin infection that actually had me in the hospital for the vast majority of the day yesterday, and I need to get some time to recover, but at the same time, this is big news, and I want to make sure that you folks are aware of it. So first of all, let's talk about saving SLS and lunar gateway that sort of thing which by the way for those of you who watch my channel you know that i have argued that this is the thing that we have to do right now given that we don't have another viable way of reaching the moon at least not currently nor in my opinion are we likely to before 2030 so let's go ahead and find out what the senate did about this quote legacy aerospace giant scored a win tuesday when the u.s senate passed president trump's budget reconciliation bill that earmarks billions more for NASA's flagship Artemis program. The $10 billion addition to the Artemis architecture, which includes funding for additional space launch system rockets and an orbiting station around the moon called Gateway, is a rebuke to critics who wish to see alternative technologies used instead. Amongst those critics are SpaceX CEO Elon Musk and billionaire entrepreneur Jared Isaacman, which uh, both of those guys, as we all know, are on the outs right now. So let's continue. There's no sign the souring relations between Musk and Trump are recovering. If Trump signs the bill, which they did, by the way, the fallout, which began after the president's abru abrupt revocation of Isaacsman's nomination, will likely continue, if not escalate, which it has, because Elon appears to be starting his own political party, but I'm not going to talk about that. Let's continue talking about SLS. Musk, in particular, has taken aim at the Space Launch System rocket on the grounds that it is fully expendable. Unlike SpaceX's family of rockets, which are all designed to be reusable, SLS is a one-time use only. That means a billion-dollar rocket is blown up every time it is launched. Even that may have been an understatement Statement. That was Musk criticism, by the way. More recent figures from NASA's watchdog put the recurring production cost closer to $2.5 billion each. A total of around $24 billion has been poured into SLS production to date. That includes, however, development too, not just production. This is not exactly a fair article in the way that it's presenting this, but nevertheless, this is TechCrunch, by the way, who uh, who is reporting this, but we'll continue. Funds that have primarily gone to a consortium of aerospace primes, including Boeing, L3 Harris's Aerojet Rocketdyne, and Northrop Grumman, which leads construction of the major rocket components. During his recent confirmation hearings with the Senate, Isaacman questioned the massive sums. He affirmed using SLS for the next two Artemis missions, in other words, Artemis II coming up at the beginning of next year, and Artemis III, which can't happen until Starship or Lunar Starship is ready to put humans on the surface of the moon, so quite a ways in the future with that one. 
but ultimately said that he didn't think the rocket was, quote, the long-term way to get to and from the moon and to Mars with great frequency. Congress and Trump, if he decides to sign the bill into law, which he obviously did, so all of this is a done deal now, have decided to press ahead. Around $4.1 billion of the $10 billion added to the document will go towards additional SLS rockets for Artemis missions 4 and 5. And by the way, Artemis 1 through 3 uses the Block 1, the basic SLS. Artemis 4 and 5 has to use the Block 1B, which requires also an upgraded launch tower, meaning that all of that has to be completed too before Artemis 4 and 5 can proceed. On the positive side of it, the Block 1B can carry a lot more payload, especially with the exploration upper stage add-on to the rocket. But nevertheless, let's continue. Meanwhile, about $2.6 billion will go towards the completion of the Gateway Space Station. Now, this is a controversial space station. In my opinion, it's a good thing. It's a great way to keep a long-term presence around the moon, maintaining a watch around the entire moon for one thing, enabling landings on the moon in many different locations. There's a lot of benefits to the Gateway. I've got videos about this topic linked at the end of this one if you're interested in checking out my argument on keeping gateway so in my opinion not a bad investment there notably the president's fiscal year budget request for nasa submitted in may proposed to phase out the space launch system in orion after artemis 3 is complete obviously this flies in the face of the proposal which was submitted before musk and trump's public fallout in june the new funding also includes $700 million for a new Mars telecommunications orbiter. $1.25 billion goes to the continual operation of the International Space Station and $325 million to SpaceX for the development of a spacecraft to de-orbit the ISS at the end of the decade. So the total award for that de-orbit is $843 million. Now let me be 100% clear about all of this. Even though I I think preserving SLS and Orion and the Lunar Gateway are all necessary things to enable mankind's return to the moon and until we have a viable replacement for these rockets, we really shouldn't be canceling them. This is all about preserving jobs. Keeping the SLS rocket production going means that the same people who are building space shuttles are going to be building SLS rockets. The same people who were employed in building rockets for the last 45 years in the same places in Texas and Louisiana and other places for that matter, they're all going to keep their jobs, which is important to people like Senator Cruz of Texas. And as far as the ISS is concerned, well, there's a lot of people who maintain the operations of that space station too in Houston, and those very same people are going to be enabling the operation of the lunar gateway after the demise of the ISS. So it's all about keeping their jobs as well. So as far as Congress is concerned, all of this is a job creation engine. It really doesn't have anything to do with whether or not it's a good idea to keep these systems. But in any event, as I said, it's still probably the best thing. But what annoys me the most is the fact that the recent government account Office report on Artemis shows that once again it's coming in over budget and behind schedule. And virtually all of the media ignored this story except for Aviation Week. So I'm going to go ahead and quote extensively from their article on the topic. Quote, most of NASA's major programs are on schedule and within 15% of their budgets. That's great. But the agency's flagship initiative to expand human presence into deep space under the Artemis program continues multi-billion dollar cost overruns, according to the U.S. Government Accountability Office. The GAO determined that 14 of 18 NASA projects assessed were within cost and schedule margins during fiscal 2025. But four programs, led by the Orion Deep Space Crew Capsule, are over budget by a total of 
of nearly $500 million. Of that, Orion alone accounted for more than $360 million in cost overruns, according to the GAO's report, which was submitted on July 1st. The cost spike was primarily due to technical issues stemming from the capsule's November 16th to December 11th, 2022 uncrewed flight test around the moon, which revealed unexpected heat shield erosion. That investigation sparked delays in the follow-on Artemis II crewed flight test, currently targeted for April of 2026. Quote, they really needed some time to figure out what happened after Artemis I in terms of the integrity of the heat shield and what the possible solutions would be. And that's according to William Russell, director of GAO Contracting and National Security Acquisitions. NASA also added some new requirements, such as docking capability, which further hike costs. So when it comes right down to it, yeah, it's understandable as to why Orion went over budget, but still, it's just another cost increase on top of so many that have happened thus far, whereas the vast majority of NASA's programs came in at budget or just slightly over budget, as we really want government programs to do. That's the kind of performance that we want to see. So for its latest report, the GAO reviewed 53 major NASA programs, those with an expected life cycle cost of more than a quarter of a billion dollars dating back to 2009 to assess NASA's historical performance. Of those, at least 30 were developed at or near their cost estimates, which the GAO determined to be less than 15% over budget. So way more than 50% of their programs pretty much came in at the cost that they were expected to come in at. The rest required rescoping, new budget baselines, and or additional money to complete. Most of the budget busters were in the Artemis portfolio. Quote, those accounted for pretty much the same amount of cost increase as the rest of the completed projects in NASA's entire portfolio, unquote. That, once again, according to Russell, the GAO determined that 48 non-Artemis projects had cost overruns totaling about $8.1 billion, and five Artemis projects, so 48 versus five, were over budget by almost $7 billion. It shows the outsized impacts of some of those Artemis projects and the level of complexity, Russell said. The scale of the efforts are pretty big, so when changes come to those programs or delays occur, it really adds up. I don't care about the excuses. Artemis came in way over budget. A lot of NASA's other programs didn't. My point is the vast majority of those programs are now being cut. The programs that behaved fiscally responsibly, everybody responsible for those, the workers, everybody else put in so much effort to bring in those projects at budget or perhaps slightly above, and now they're being rewarded by losing their damn jobs. And the programs that were the least fiscally responsible just got another $10 billion in funding. It sends entirely the wrong message to the government, and it's no way to reduce spending or to increase efficiency in the U.S. government. It's very, very annoying, and I'm tired of ranting about it, and I think it's time for me to just get back to bed now. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, I think. It seems that Sunline decided to keep the store open for one more day through the end of the weekend. So if you want a NASA budget cut suck t-shirt, seems that a couple of people actually picked them up yesterday. Well, you probably have today to get those purchased and then we'll be shutting the store down tomorrow and uh, I'll let you know when it's going to come available again. Thanks very much for everybody who decided to support all of that. So until next time, folks, I urge all of you to stay angry about space.